Hello and welcome to the session recap of session 3 for Google's G Suite training here at Columbia Gorge Community College. Uh, if you have not watched session 1 or 2 recap, please go back and watch that. There will be links in the description as well as this should be a part of the playlist. Um, so you can be able to navigate that way as well. Um, let's jump right on into session 3 recap. So go ahead and go to google.com and sign in with your college account. So I will use a temp user here. And once you are inside of it, the four applications that we went over in session three would be found under the Google Apps menu. So the first one that we'd like to talk about is Google Meet. So Google Meet is the actual video conferencing solution that we are using for doing the remote viewing of these trainings. Um, it is a web conferencing tool that ties right in with your, um, with your laptop or with your smartphone or tablet. Um, so that way you can actually join meetings, you can host meetings um, all on the go or from, from far away uh, using the power of the internet. So if you are tied into Google Calendar, which we'll be discussing on session four, um, then any new meetings that you have coming up for the day will automatically show up in a list here for you. Um, since we don't have anything scheduled on our Google Calendar yet, um, we'll go ahead and we'll start a meeting. So by starting a meeting, what that does is if you have a camera or microphone, which I have neither of these currently on this system, um, what it will do is it will automatically connect you and it will give you a meeting code here that you can then share. When they connect in, it will actually prompt everyone else in the meeting to see if they want to allow that person into the meeting, um, everyone that, who's internal to the college. So it's actually kind of a unique system um, for, for doing web conferencing, and there's obviously other tie-ins and things that um, will become more available the more integrated our systems become um, and that is on the horizon so that's what meet is um, once you're inside of a meeting um, let's just join in here real quick um, it'll immediately give you a prompt again you can just copy it from right there and that will copy this link to the to the uh, clipboard so that way you can paste it inside of an email or a chat things like that um, so immediately over here if you ever need to get back to that in the meeting details that's where that little pop-up comes to um, you can join by microphone. Um, we don't have a webcam on this machine, otherwise there would be one here, or you can just leave straight out. Um, if you'd like to present, you can choose to uh, share your entire screen or just maybe a window that you have open, um, which would be very nice if there's you know, just like an Excel sheet or a Google sheet in this case um, that you wanted to share some data with. Um, you can just share that window so they're not seeing all of your desktop and everything else that, you, every, everything else that you've got running. So it's a, it's a very unique tool, and it's pretty cool. Um, under the menu that they've got over here on the side, there's a couple different settings where you can adjust um, you know, your, what your video, camera that you're using, microphone, speakers, things like that, as well as some network settings. Um, and you also have the option to full screen it up here if you'd like. So that way you'll come into a full screen meeting. And you can just hit escape to exit out of that at any point in time. Um, so over here on the right side, it'll start listing out other participants as they join into the call. Um, again, there's no one else in this one, so this is just us for now. Um, and over here, it'll have a chat. So for everyone who's inside of the meeting, they can also use this chat um, when, when maybe someone else is talking, they want to give some input or some feedback and things like that. So it's a pretty, pretty easy system to use, um, pretty straightforward, not a lot of bells and whistles, but it's, it's just a simple interface that gets things done. So the next application we want to talk about is Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts is an instant messenger client similar to Novell Messenger or Spark like we're currently using, but with a lot of added functionality and actually a lot of ease of access for getting a hold of people here at the college, um, and even in some cases externally as well. So uh, inside of Google Hangouts, you can make video calls, phone calls. Um, so the video functionality is more designed to be a one-on-one -on -one where you can call someone um, specifically whereas the Google Meet is meant to be something where you schedule a meeting and then lots of people can join in whether they're internal or external. Uh, Google Hangouts video call might be a little bit less formal, um, but something that's you know pretty pretty uh, easy to just jump right into or create a group and everyone has the link where they can just get in. So it's got some, some unique features about it that Meet doesn't have. Um, it's just kind of targeted, I think, in a little bit different um, aspects. So the well, thing we want to talk about primarily today would be the messaging. So you can come up here to the uh, new conversation, the big green plus button, click on that. And if you just type someone's name in here, you'll just send them a direct message. Or you can choose to create a new group. Um, you create a new group would mean you can add in multiple people and then everyone gets joined into that. 
So we'll use um, Danny. So down here in the bottom corner, you can send emojis as well. So it's a full featured instant messaging client. And again, there's uh, apps for it on the iOS app store or on Google Play. Um, so it's, it's an easy to use little uh, instant messenger client uh, that also connects in quite well here at the college. Um, when you use your college account, it's also FERPA compliant as well. So you can attach images down here if you want to send a photo. Um, you can draw. There's lots of different things that you can do. Very easily up here at the top, I could make this uh, chat into a video call. I can add someone else into it and it creates it into a group automatically. Or I could do a phone call here as well. And you can see that because Danny has his college phone number entered in under his account uh, by the global directory, um, I would just immediately could call his number. Um, it would ring on his desk phone from my computer. Now, it's my, my desktop computer is not set up well for that, but it would work out very well if you had a laptop or other things like that, maybe where you don't have great cell service, um, but you do have internet connection. So if we're going to send Danny a message here real quick, we could just say hello. And as you can see, it will say sending, and when it's done, um, it gives us a timestamp when that happened. Now, I see Danny's picture popped up here, popped up here with some dots, which means that he's seen it, and now he's actually typing something back. So once he sends that message, bam, there we go. So we can see the time frame when he sent it as well. And we also get a little presence icon down here at the bottom. When this is lit up, we can tell that he's actually in the chat. If we were to close out of the window, or if he's on mobile, if he closes the app, um, that would kind of blank out, or it would kind of fade out a little bit, I would guess. But just like that. So that's kind of how Hangouts works. Um, if we wanted to pull somebody else into this conversation here real quick, um, we could actually put in my account, my main one, and we can create a group just that fast. Now it creates a second group here, but it doesn't add them to the original chat. This still stays just me and Danny. So I'll exit out of that one for now. So if I want to send a message to this one and say, hello group, come like that. Now you'll notice I got this little pop-up down over here for me. Uh, this is because I actually have the local um, Hangouts client on my computer. So that actually popped up for me on my local computer. I can come up here, I can see who's all in here. Um, and we can actually add more people if we wanted to. We could kick somebody else out things like that. So that's how Hangouts works in that sense. And over here on the left, it'll kind of give us a running total of our different chats, things like that. So the most frequent ones will start floating up to the top. Um, over here, you've got some contacts. You can go in and do different in, uh, invites. You also have different app downloads, things like that. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this application. So the next one we wanted to jump into so the next one we want to jump into is called Keep. So Google Keep will be in your apps menu. It'll look like a little light bulb, an orange light bulb. So Google Keep is a note-taking tool um, that syncs up with your college account as well. So these become accessible um, anywhere you log in to your college account at, um, as well as on uh, mobile devices when you get the applications. Um, these notes are backed up in real time, and you have different ways of looking at them. Um, if you want to adjust views and things like that, you can as apply different labels to notes. Um, so that way it makes easy for categorizing as well as archiving. So if I were to make a new note, I could call this list of things to do today. And under here I could say I'm going to um, wake up, I'm going to fill out a report, and I'm going to go to lunch. So I can change the color uh, by going through these menu icons here. Um, find one that maybe works best for me. I kind of like white. It's great. Um, I can add an image into this one if I wanted to. Um, I could also archive this note if I didn't want it to show up on my main menu anymore. It would come into my archives over here where from there I could actually unarchive it and it comes back into my main notes menu. So let's actually create a new label and let's call this uh, things to do. And I'm actually going to apply that label. Apply that label to this note. So sure enough, it'll give me a list of my labels down here. We'll just select that one so it's on there. Now if I wanted to add somebody else to this one, I could add a collaborator. So I could add my main account and say I'm now a collaborator. Give it a second. It'll say done and done. So now I can see who else has access to this note. Um, I can make this a reminder. I could uh, 
make this actually into a checklist, which actually might make more sense for this kind of uh, a note. So as soon as you have done something, so let's say I woke up, it'll cross it out for you and things like that. Moves it down to the bottom and if you want to you could even check all items here. You could make a copy of the note um, or if you want to you can just copy your notes contents to Google Docs which we could do that. What that does is it just automatically copies it, creates a document for you and you're done. So the more at notes that you add, which we can just add in a bunch of random stuff here, doesn't matter, um, it'll start adding in more and more notes for you and the more notes that you add the more that stuff might kind of start to get lost in the middle. So looks like I actually clicked it here as I was doing that, but uh, that's what I wanted to show you guys was the pin feature. So any one of your notes, like if we really wanted to keep that one up at the top, we could just pin it, and that one will always stay up on the top, no matter if we add other ones, uh, those will always filter down below. And of course we can pin multiple ones, we could pin as many as we wanted to. Um, these notes are also rearrangeable, so you can also just gra grab and drag anywhere to rearrange your pin notes or even your unpinned notes. Um, by default, it's done by the last time that you edited it. We'll move those to the top. There's another way of looking at it, which is called the list view, which will just sort them straight from top to bottom. Um, but I kind of like this kind of menagerie look that they've got going on, whatever the technical term is. So that's kind of how Google Keep works. Uh, again, it's a note-taking tool. It's nice for collaborating on different notes and things like that, something that maybe doesn't need a full-fledged document that you guys are working together, but just some place where you can just kind of uh, keep your thoughts together or people get a quick look, for example, of how we use it, of your things that you're going to do that day. So the next one, we want, next application I wanted to show you guys was Zoom. Zoom will be found at the very bottom and actually is not a Google app. This is actually a, something that's tied in with your college account, but it's hosted by Zoom.us. So Zoom is another video conferencing solution. Um, so that's three now that you have accessible to you within your college account. Um, Zoom is more designed around um, a classroom or a lecture style. By using Zoom, you can add a hundred uh, different participants into your meeting. Um, and to create one, you just come in here to host a meeting. You can choose whether you want to do it without a video, with it, you, if you do want video, or if you're just going to be screen sharing. Um, so if you're going to do a screen share, we get a couple of different cool tools. Um, Zoom does require a local install if you are on Windows, but it's pretty easy and self-explanatory for you to get it all set up and running. Um, different operating systems may require different settings and tweaks to get it to work just fine for them. But once it's all installed, you'll connect into your meeting, and then you can share your desktop. You can share a virtual whiteboard, um, which is kind of one of my favorite parts about it. Is you can come up, you can type in some text, doesn't matter what it says. Um, and after, once you're done, you can actually drag and move those around. So it's actually a little bit better than a real whiteboard in that sense. Um, but you can do different drawings and things like that. So uh, inside of here, you get different participation um, tools inside of your with your participants. Since we're the only one in here, we won't see these. Um, but if more people were to join in, we'd have the ability to mute everybody. We could make everybody talk at once. We could um, lock the meeting so no, no one else can join in. Um, other different options we get under there. Um, we can allow no one to speak and then you know so the uh, participants can raise their hands, we can acknowledge them through this system in here and, and allow them access to their microphone then to be able to share with the rest of the meeting. And for as long as you are screen sharing you'll get this little um, bar up at the very top where you have the ability to jump in and out of other things. So we will go ahead and end this meeting for right now. Um, but also, one other little note, you do have the ability to record. So you can record your meetings as well. So we'll end the meeting for everybody, and we'll go ahead and close out of that one. So the link to get to Zoom is cgcc.zoom.us, and you click on the blue Sign In button here next to configure your account. If you're not signed into your college account yet into Zoom, it'll prompt you here to enter it in. So in this case, we'll do our test user, and it'll connect us in just like that. So that's it. That's all the training stuff that we went over for session three. Um, hope to see you guys again on Wednesday of this week, which will be the 11th uh, for training from 10 to 11 a.m. in room 3103 at the Dallas campus. Thanks. Have a great day.